Hello, today I'm going to describe to you some of the aspects of my PhD research which relate to the secondary uses of medical data. A secondary use of medical data is a use that doesn't pertain to the delivery of your health care. In the era of health information systems supporting the delivery of health care, there are vast volumes of data which are being recorded whilst physicians are providing care to their patients. Those vast volumes of data are actually a valuable resource to many organisations. On the screen up there I've listed in the purple zone some of the organisations that are very interested in having access to your medical information for their secondary purposes. Their purposes range from medical research all the way through to very commercial applications. Uh, the restricted access privacy theory has long been used by members of the medical community to protect the data that passes between a patient and a physician. In this age of electronic medical records uh, and electronic data exchange and storage, that privacy theory is under a lot of pressure. There are additional privacy theories that are available to guide our management of that data. It is essential that we consider all those privacy theories as we look towards the future. Many privacy advocates are very concerned about the uh, in introduction of surveillance into society and with the uh, introduction of the 16 digit unique identifier that the Australian government gave to every Australian last year, whether you liked it or not, we can now monitor people from the cradle to the grave, which is quite useful for retrospective observational research. However, it's also quite alarming. The Australian Law Reform Commission says that we should not create de facto um, identifiers that can be used to track people. I asked the Australian public what they thought about the restricted access limited control privacy theory, which is another one which could be quite useful. 1,158 Australians told me what they thought about that, that application of that theory in secondary uses of medical data. Basically, they gave the thumbs up to that research theory and they gave the thumbs down to the Australian government having control over secondary uses of their medical data. Using that theory, I've operationalised it into a module, an information systems module, that can plug into your e-health record, capture your preferences for secondary use, including your privacy expectations. I've also made data governance and legislation recommendations because they need to accompany that technology module. The module on its own is insufficient. I'm very excited about my research and I'd be delighted to talk to anybody else who'd like to give me their opinion. Thank you. I thought it might be you, Alison. <laughs> I'm not apologising for being me, but I thought that was a great talk. I'm really interested here in the right of the public mm. and our planning for health care versus the right of the individual. Um, an argument that's often made is looking at the balance between the right of an individual versus the needs of the broader community, especially when it comes to retrospective observational studies. A privacy advocate would tell you that an individual is never going to stack it up against society. And so uh, looking at privacy from that point of view is always going to lean in favour of a medical researcher. Um, there's quite a bit of debate about whether that's actually appropriate. It's been going on for decades. It's far from being solved. And I've tried to find a technological solution that will enable consumers to express to ethics committees exactly what their expectation is for their medical information, which can make it easier to achieve that balance because if they say you can use it, then go ahead and use it. If they want to withdraw themselves completely from it, then don't touch it. So that would empower them and help get that balance back so that their voice is actually heard. Talk to me a bit, if you would, around anonymised data because there's clearly a world of difference if there's a whole health package with yeah. the name Alison Jones attached to it. Yeah. But if I've got you know, all my blood pressure measurements and whatever over a lifetime on an anonymised data yeah. set, why would I be so worried? Okay, um, there are two trains of thought on this. One is that if you remove anything that identifies that individual, you can use that data for anything you like. Another train of thought is that 
even though you have removed the person's identifying characteristics from their data, indeed that is still specific to that individual and therefore they should have some control over the use of it. Um, Professor Roger Magnuson at Sydney University warns we're on a slippery slidey slope if we think we can anonymise information and then use it for whatever surveillance we want. Thanks very much. I think you're, you've entered a really complex field and you've articulated it very, very well. Thank, Thank you. you for that. Thank you.